Hey everyone, today I'm talking about some of these new filters. Well, I guess they're not all new, but the Moment Cine Bloom and the new Peter McKinnon filters. It is the 30th today and the Peter McKinnon filter is available today. So I've been waiting to kind of see if there's any more details about it um, for the 30th. So I went on the website for Polar Pro and found out that if you have the first edition, you can actually get like a really nice discount on the second one if you can show the proof of purchase. So I'm kind of mulling right now between the Cine Bloom that I've been looking at for about a week since I think it came out and the Tiffin because since I've been talking about the Cine Bloom, some people have told me to look at the Tiffin. It looks like there's a variable ND2 second edition for um, the Peter McKinnon filter, but there's also some sort of cinema haze thing, whatever you wanna call that group of filters, Promist, whatever. So I'm interested to see what's up with that. The Cine Bloom and the Tiffin are actually really affordable. One of the reasons why I'm having trouble choosing. There's more sizes in the Tiffin than there is in the Cine Bloom. And I have some really smaller like primes that I would love to get a smaller or one of the less common filter sizes for that is not available in the Cine Bloom, but is in the Tiffin. I haven't looked at the sizes for the Peter McKinnon yet, but I'm willing to bet that there's probably like three or four and they're on the larger end. So I don't know, I might buy all three. I might see what's up. I ended up ordering all three filters. I got the 1 8th Tiffin Pro Mist to go on my 40 millimeter. I also ordered the 77 millimeter Peter McKinnon Mist Edition in the two to five stop. And then I ordered the Cine Bloom 10%. I was on the fence between 10% and 20% on the Cine Bloom. I stuck with the 10. I just, I don't know, I feel like there's no turning back if it's too much. It's been a really long day, um, but it's only been two days and my moment Cine Bloom filter has already arrived, which is super awesome. So let's see what we have in this one, at least. I've also decided that I'm not going to like put the Tiffin and the Cine Bloom and Peter's filter together because of the fact that Peter's has the ND and I just, I don't really think that it makes sense to put them together, so I'm going to do a whole separate, a whole separate thing for Peters. It's pretty nice. I like it. Super tiny. <laughs> Here we go. This is a 10%. I swear other people have much better autofocus on this camera than I do. Anyway, <laughs> here it is and it has arrived. Actually, isn't it for this lens? No, it must be for my 85. Okay, so it is now October 4th. It's been four days, I guess that makes it, since I ordered my filters. Now I have received the Tiffin. So I'm gonna open that. Yeah, so this one is for my 40 millimeter lens, which is on the camera. Super small. Now let's see if I can get into this thing. I guess we'll split the tape right here. I don't know. I swear to God, I'm not an idiot. Here we go. <laughs> Tiniest. Promise. It's probably not the teeniest, tiniest, but it is really freaking small. Magic. Do I look so beautiful? 
We are now at the point where I have taken the Pro Mist and the Cine Bloom out to do some stills separately. I did take a couple sample images or maybe just one sample image with both. Right now, I don't want to compare them when I'm shooting. I'm just trying to see what I can do with them. And then I'm looking later at post and seeing what I think about each. After that, I will go out and stage a shoot, shoot the exact same photos with both. So for now, these are my impressions on each by themselves. So I've gone through and I've edited a bunch of these exactly the same, no matter what conditions I was in, adjusted the exposure a little bit and uh, just done some different things. I've pulled out the ones that I like the best and uh, we're gonna see what we think about these. We're kind of peeking around the side of the brick here and we're looking at the, the dropping sun coming right into the lens, trying to get as dramatic of an effect as possible without completely washing out the image. On the next one, this is just around that side of brick and now we're looking straight into the sun. So we're kind of getting this silhouette where we're getting less of a lens flare and we're positioned just to get the silhouette. I actually think this looks really cool. I didn't shoot this without the filter on. I'd be really interested to see what it would look like with the camera, but you're gonna see in a couple minutes that um, it looks completely different when you're shooting without it. Much more so actually than I really thought would, would be the case. In this sort of barbershop looking one, this is the same brick wall. Again, I'm trying to play with looking directly into the sun. You know, the sun is blaring off the glass. I wouldn't necessarily call this a great photo, but I'm just playing with the light to see what this thing is capable of. And the sun is right behind her, so it's not really washing her out or bringing any rays around the side of her face. After this, we went around the corner of the barbershop and I have to tell you, this is where this one shines. Now we're kind of in this alley around the corner. And as you can see, there's two brick buildings on either side. Because of the fact that there's no direct sun at all coming in, you can kind of see on the right that there's sun that's um, reflected onto the side of the brick. Down in here, she's very diffused. And this is insanely beautiful. Her skin is so smooth. And there's no post-processing like smoothing or, or anything like that on the skin. This is just simply some edits that I've done um, there's a little bit of noise reduction, but it doesn't really do a lot. Really, it's the texture and the grain that I find would take kind of that look off the skin if it was, if it didn't look so good. She, she does have really nice skin, but I was just a little bit blown away with this. I'm pretty amazed by that. It, it really does shine in the shade. Obviously you want to shoot in the shade. Everybody knows that, but I wanted to try this in every lighting condition possible. So down the street a little bit, we're kind of, we're walking down Main Street, but we're behind the buildings. It's kind of like a hidden, it's not really hidden, but hidden walkway between the buildings. So we're behind all of the businesses on Main Street basically walking. Now we're at this kind of cool, like dodgy area where there's like, it looks like there's a theater door and it's, it's kind of interesting. It says downstage. Um, it's pretty, it's pretty <laughs> gross, but this is exactly the type of background that I really like. So I chose this spot because the sun was at a point where it was still up, but it was tucked behind some of the taller buildings. So halfway up the image, or I guess three quarters, you can see where the sun is still shining really bright. And then the bottom part of the image is exposed really nicely in the shade. So I really like the way that looked. I don't know that it resonated that well, but so on the next one, I'm, I'm looking up at her to get this interesting perspective. I'm trying with all these photos to get compositions that are dynamic, that have depth, that help kind of sell the look of these because these types of filters that are cinematic, right? Like you have to still be able to make good compositions. And I think it's important to showcase the best looking work possible and the best compositions when you're talking about these kinds of products. I don't think 
that you should just go out and take a bunch of random stupid photos or boring compositions to showcase it. I think you should put it in its best case scenario. That's what we're all trying to do, is shoot our best work every time. So here we've come to the parking garage. I love this location. I've actually only shot in this particular one once. So um, I didn't really know exactly what we were gonna get. What I love about this next set is that we have this natural light coming in sort of the open, I guess, they're not windows, but the open sides of the garage that is very much blue uh, because it's daylight. Then we've got these fluorescent bulbs with this whole other color to them and this look. And then we actually have a brick wall in this first part that's another building next to the parking garage. And the sun is coming over the parking garage and it's bouncing off the red and it's coming back onto Kayla's face. So we took a lot of photos right here just to try to see how this filter looked with all these different types of light coming in. So on the first one, you can clearly see where the sun is bouncing onto the concrete and it's very dark in the background where you would be inside the parking garage. This is actually kind of like still outside of it. So I really like the the way they have like the street name and the level painted. So I try to utilize that in these images. I really like this sort of silhouette, half silhouette thing that we have going on here. This is, this is exactly what I was talking about where the light that looks quite warm on her face is bouncing off a brick wall across from her. And then you still have that blue daylight on the cement there. And then of course you have this fall off into almost complete blackness behind her. I think it looks really cool. It's a little hard to process because uh, it's, it's the EOS R not doing so hot with the dark shadows, but I'm sure if you zoomed in, it probably looks a little rough there. I think it's pretty cool. And then here's another one where I just came a little farther you know, to her, her front so that I could actually get the light coming in the side too. So we have so many light sources here. We have the exit sign. We have the actual daylight um, on the wall there, the Pine Street. We have the daylight coming in the back. We have the warm daylight bouncing off the brick. And out of frame, we have fluorescent light. So I'm not really sure how many more ways we could represent light. I think it's pretty awesome. So. Now we're kind of walking up the ramp. We're shooting directly into the sun to really get this kind of silhouette. I do love the way we have this dark black wall, just framing the photo in black and there's no detail there. And then it opens up and you have this depth coming up the ramp. Um, and you can see that the filter really does kind of soften the light that's coming in. And then this is the exact same spot from the side where I'm trying to kind of get this little bit of Rembrandt look. It's not exactly working with the sun, but it's lighting her face really nicely and smoothly. Now we're up on the roof. This is one of my favorites. I chose this angle because there's just so many layers of depth going on. You know, there's the wall in front of her going to the next wall, going to that building, to the next building, to the next. I think that's a really cool composition. And again, the, the light is just so even. I also think this filter is helping a lot retaining color in the sky. Now we have the sun dipping down and we're actually in the light. So before with the parking garage, I was sort of in the shadows, kind of overcast. There was no light rays. Now we've moved over to where the sun is actually dipping and we can see, and this is the one spot that I did use the Cine Bloom and the Tiffin on each shot. And I can tell right away, I also took it off completely. You can see a huge difference from Tiffin on to nothing. It's just not the same. And then, like I said, this was the only test I did with that one shot with the um, Cine Bloom. It's so different. Um, I think the more I've used these, and I haven't used them a lot, but the more I did with these by themselves, I started to realize that 
I don't know how you can really compare them. I would, I don't know at this point so far, I don't know that I would say it's an either or situation. There's such different tools that it's hard for me to say, oh, you should definitely get the Pro Mist over the Cine Bloom or vice versa. I think that the Cine Bloom has a little bit more of a stylistic look. As of right now, with one test in for each, I would say the Tiffin is something that I would probably never take off my lens. I, th I feel comfortable with the 1.8 constantly shooting stills, because I haven't done any video yet, with the Tiffin. I don't think that it does anything that I would ever say, ooh, that's a little too much. I don't think I want that on there. I would, I would keep it on there. Which reminds me, it's not on my lens right now. Something else that I would uh, definitely think about is that for what I've seen for a lot of these videos about this, a lot of people are showing the difference like on a talking head like this. So I just put the filter on. Um, I took a couple stills with each in my studio with this light just to see, and there's definitely a little bit of a difference, but it's pretty subtle. You take it outside, take some shots, move around, do different stuff, because if you're just watching videos of people showing you what this does in the studio environment, I don't think it does it justice at all. The Tiffin is where it's shining is taking the harsh points of the light and redirecting it, and it is blooming it out, but it's not like crazy taking over the frame. I also think that sometimes when I'm shooting into the sun without anything, or even just with a polarizer, it's just not quite as dynamic. It's it's kind of, it's like when you look at the sunset and you're like, oh my God, this is the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. And you try to snap a photo, like especially with like your phone or something, and you look at it and you're like, it's just better off enjoying it with your own eyes because it never resonates through the camera. That's kind of what I feel the Tiffin helps to bring that more what you're seeing in life look a little more, which is amazing, right? So as far as the Cine Bloom goes, I again, I think it's a stylistic look. I love it. I really love it. Um, so we can look at some stills from the Cine Bloom. We just kind of went to another town a few miles away where I actually grew up. And I was like, oh, you know, there's kind of like some cool stuff downtown, again, behind the main street. Um, by the water, there's some pretty cool, just really crumbling little areas um, that I haven't been to in a while. So when we got there, I realized that they've done a lot of stuff downtown. So I was pretty excited. And we actually got some of what I would call, if not the best work I've ever shot of just the both of us. We found this really cool mural and uh, it was a pretty awesome experience. We also found this dark, um, well, black painted wall that was brick, I guess. And then it had a fire escape painted the same exact color. And when the light shining on it, you just could see this nice gradient from like almost light gray all the way into dark black. And I thought the background was amazing. Right away in these tight portrait shots, we're shooting up against this old historic kind of mural, which I chose because it's got just, it's so bold. It has the boldest of, of colors in the background. It's like a box of crayons. So we've got these shots of Kayla. Again, this is the same exact preset that I created. There's no skin smoothing of any kind. And these are incredibly dynamic. I mean, I just was completely blown away with the look of the skin on this Cine Bloom. So we found this amazing mural downtown. Kayla had this turquoise sweater on and it just was perfect with this background. So I like to call this shot Kayla's influencer shot, which is stupid and ridiculous, obviously. So what I love about this backdrop, like I said, is just how you have this one color black, but the way the light's hitting it is creating all this dimension in the space. And I think it's amazing. And again, look at, this is an overcast day. Just look at how amazing this photo looks. I don't even know how to describe it, but it does not look like this without the filter. I think that it's best just to let these speak for themselves because I don't really know what to say about it, except when I look at it, I just think it looks incredible. It takes the photography up a notch and it really gives this look that I love. 
I don't know if it's cinematic. I don't know what to call it. But when you see it, you will know. And that's really all that matters. We got an opportunity to take some photos with some interesting light just to see the blooming effect. So I've got a couple pictures of Kayla kind of sitting at this bar, which I think looks super cool. There's like Edison bulbs above her. And of course there's some interesting backlighting, maybe LED backlighting. Um, and then her face is actually lit by the sun. So that's an opportunity to see kind of how this filter blooms the light. We also utilized just like an outdoor light that was shining in the back, again with the daylight, just so you can see what it's doing. Both of these filters are absolutely amazing. I love them both. I will probably leave them both on my camera, cameras. One is on, the Tiffin's on my 40 right now. The photos look better on the 85 and I guess that's not one of the reasons why I don't wanna to do too much of a comparison because the 85 for portraits looks better than 40 any day of the week. There's just no, there's no way that that's not gonna be the case. It's, it's better, it's nicer, the aperture is lower. It's made to do that job. I do think for a, I don't know, 125, I think I could be wrong, maybe 225 super cheap 40 millimeter EF lens. This lens does amazing work. It's the only prime I have that's like even remotely wide other than my zooms. And the more I use these cheap little Canon primes, the more I just keep putting down my freaking L zoom lenses. It's crazy. I need to get L primes. I'll probably cry myself to sleep if I saw the images. So hopefully what you've seen uh, gives you some idea about what these things are capable of. I plan to do a side-by-side -side comparison with video, something super awesome. I don't want to do like, you know, here's a person walking in front of neon lights. Here's a person walking in front of some more cool looking lights. I, I wanna create a story and do something super epic. We'll see, we'll see.